Bagajo Hatta Anki Ampata Rai 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 Yeah. 
यार करो छाते तू करा दो
जाओ Shri Krishna, Shri Tanya, 
Patitanam Avanibhyo Vaishnavi Namo Namaha Namo Mahabharanaya Krishna Prema Pratayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gohura Paishenama E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Tinamandu Jagatpate Rupesha Gopika Kanta Sri Radha Kanta Namostate Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Sri Adhaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Vahura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sadhguru, for making this evening possible. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna, speaking to Arjuna, gives a definition of the truth, wherein he describes that when you have thus learned the truth, you will know that all living beings are my parts and parcels, that they are in me, and that they are mine. To understand, in essence, who we are, and to live practically according to that knowledge, that is the truth. We are all part of God. Krishna, the Supreme Absolute Truth, or God, is Satchit Ananda. He is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of bliss. As his parts and parcels, we are also eternal, full of knowledge, and full of bliss, qualitatively one with the Supreme. But we find that this body, which we so carelessly call ourself, is certainly not eternal. At the most it will live 100 years. And in the process, after the age of about 35, it starts deteriorating. Huh? If you live 100 years, that means for 35 years you're growing and developing, and for 65 to 70 years, you're simply deteriorating, you're going downhill. <laughs> so, obviously, this body is not eternal. As far as being full of knowledge, we do not even know what is going to happen tomorrow. We do not even know what is taking place in the next room. There are a few things we know, but there are hundreds and trillions, infinite things that we do not know. <laughs> what? Our knowledge, even if you have a PhD at the biggest university in all of the world, still, it's very tiny, infinitesimal, what you do know. And it's infinite, what you do not know. So certainly this body is not full of knowledge. And as far as being full of bliss, uh, <laughs> need we discuss it at length? This body is subjected to miseries at any moment. If all circumstances go exactly as you plan them, you are happy. But if one thing goes wrong, you become frustrated. Now, at any given moment, I ask you, how many varieties of ways can things go wrong? Huh? Can you count them? Infinite. <laughs> There's an infinity of ways that things go wrong at any moment and spoil everything for your day. Someone can die. There can be a world war. 
the weather, the stock market, their business, their children. You can become sick. Huh? Somebody can steal something. So are we full of bliss? This body and mind is not full of bliss. It is subject to great suffering. And ultimately, that's all this body is, is suffering. Old age is nothing but suffering. Simply trying to tolerate it day after day after day. Trying to forget the pain. In the country I am from, the United States of America, uh, <clears throat> what do people do when they grow old? Actually, you can judge the mentality of a society by what people choose to do when they attain that stage of old age, when everything starts to fall apart. In this land of India, traditionally, the people would follow the Varnashram Dharma. Where after Grihastha life, after the children are grown up, and they are supporting and maintaining themselves. And after the parents are old enough <clears throat> where they see that death is coming near, they retire from their worldly activities, they go to a holy place, and they dedicate uh, the remaining portion of their life exclusively to devotion to the Lord, to prepare for their next life. If you go to a holy place like Vrindavan, Ayodhya, Jagannath Puri Dham, you will find that a very large section of the population are very old. Widows, uh, old, old Babajis. They want to end their life in a very, very glorious manner. They want to end their life fixing their consciousness absolutely on the mercy of God. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yam yam vapis maran bhavam ke jatyam te kalevaram tam tam evaiti kunte asatate bhava bhavata. That whatever you think of at the time of death, that is what you will attain without fail. Antakali chamami vas maran lakva kalevaram. Krishna says, one who thinks of me at the time of death will attain me. Of this there is no doubt. So what will we think of at the time of death? At the time of death, you are not given a choice of what you want to think of. Otherwise, we can just do all nonsense all our life and just come to that decision that at the time of death, I'll just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and everything else is, doesn't matter. So why should I perform a religious life when sinful activity is so fun? I will just enjoy sinful activities to my heart's content. And at the time of death, I will just say, Hare Krishna, I know the secret. <laughs> but it does not work that way. At the time of death, it is such a traumatic experience that you have no option what you want to think of. The prominent consciousness that you have awakened during your life that will all come together as a last thought at the time of death. If you are addicted to all materialistic activities during your life, there will be one great big desire for material sense gratification at the time of death. Reaped in fear and horror, seeing everything as being taken away. But if during your life you cultivate devotion to God, you cultivate love of God, you habituate yourself to finding pleasure and joy in the name of God, you seek shelter in the name of God, then at the time of death, naturally, God will appear to you in His holy name. So because people have this intelligence in this great land of India, at least they're supposed to have this intelligence in this land of Bharat Varsha. Therefore, it has been traditional that at the old age, people go to Badrinath, Ayodhya, Vrindavan, Rishikesh, or some holy place, specifically for the sake of purifying their consciousness and coming closer in devotion.
to the Supreme Lord. Now in my country, ah, the fine land of America, the land of the free and home of the brave, where especially the young generation of India, they are mad to come to America. They'll do anything to come to America. They'll even join the Hare Krishna movement if they can get a visa. <laughs> What do the old people do? If you go to a place like Southern Florida, Miami Beach, tens of thousands of old people from all over America go there to spend their last days. What do they do? They watch television. And when they want to have a more dynamic and exciting social intercourse, they play checkers. Do you know what checkers is? you have this in India? It's a, it's a foolish little game where you just move one, one little disc from one square to the next. It's something children play. When you're five years old, you learn how to play this little game with a board, move from one square to the next. Or they play chess. Uh, or they play cards. Huh? In other words, they are so bored. There is so much pain and frustration in life. They're just uselessly finding any form of entertainment they can possibly grasp onto simply for the purpose of forgetting the reality of life. Huh? Actually, the various forms of entertainment, athletics. People take shelter of them because they simply want to forget the reality of the frustrations of their existence. People become addicted to watching television. Why? Because when the television's not on, all that's left is their own mind. Oh my God. It's horrible. So many frustrated thoughts, so many unfulfilled desires. It's intolerable to just face yourself and live with yourself, so you have to escape it by just finding some adventurous um, illusion that you concentrate on. So obviously, this body and mind is not full of bliss. Therefore, if our existence is not eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss, we can understand we are not living according to the truth. We are living according to an illusion. Prahlad Maharaj in Bhagavatam declares, Maya Sukhaya. He says, to Lord Narasimha Dev, my dear Lord, I may have been gone through in so much persecution and hardships in my life, but I do not mind. The fact that I was, my father tried to kill me in so many various horrible ways, that does not disturb me the slightest bit, because I am always thinking of you, and you are the source of all bliss. You are the source of all happiness. As soon as we think of you, all the miseries of material existence vanish. Krishna Surya Samaya Hoyandaka, Yahan Krishna Tahanai Maya Radhika. Krishna is like the shining sun. And the miseries of material existence are all based on illusion due to ignorance. Ignorance is darkness. Darkness of ignorance cannot possibly stand before the light of the sun, of the truth, or Krishna. Krishna describes in Gita, when, however, one is enlightened by this knowledge, then all darkness and ignorance is dispelled as the sun lights up everything in the morning. So a devotee of the Lord, like Prahlad Maharaj, 
He was not in any anxiety or distress over what was coming upon him because he was always thinking of Krishna, who is the source of all bliss in all circumstances. But he's described that I do have a very deep lamentation in my heart. And what is that lamentation? For those fools and rascals who are making big, big plans in this material world to try to find happiness and relief from anxiety. The more they make their plans, the more they entangle themselves in miseries and bondage. That is the nature of this world. You know, the Creator, the Lord, gives us so many hints and indications in His creation of the situation we're in. Did you ever see the spider, how he very cleverly and expertly weaves his web? Huh? Have you seen? It's actually a very beautiful creation. And it's very functional. The purpose of the web is single-pointed to catch the fly. Huh? To the fly, the spider symbolizes death. Now when the fly, somehow or other, is attracted to the beauty of the web, he thinks, ah, this is a very comfortable place to rest. It does look very comfortable, very soft. Ah very beautifully decorated especially in the morning with the glistening dew <laughs> so the fly is thinking ah a nice comfortable sitting place let me enjoy and then he sits and enjoys and then when it is time for him to go <laughs> he cannot move so he thinks ah what to do i'm stuck 